بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Try to picture this in your mind, even if you have to close your eyes for a minute. The day of judgment happened. People cried, people screamed, people rejoiced, people laughed. It's over. The day of judgment is over. Okay? People have been dragged into the hellfire. People have been pulled into paradise. And the plains of the day of judgment are not empty. Whatever they look like. The gates of Jannah are closed. Everyone's inside. The gate of Jahannam is crushed and closed on top, squeezing the people of hellfire inside. Because it's so full. Allah says in Surah Al-Qaf, يَقُولُ الْجَحَنَّمْ حَلِمْ تَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ وَتَقُولُ الْحَلْبِ الْمَزِيدِ The hellfire will speak. And Allah will speak to the hellfire and say, Are you full yet? And the hellfire will be shocked and it will say, Are there more to come? Meaning, bring them, I'll make space. So all this is over now. And there's this one person. He's trapped in hell. And he's crying and he's screaming and he's begging and he's been purified for all his evil deeds. One second in hell, brothers and sisters, is un intolerable. You can't even go for one second. So don't risk going. This man will be a Muslim. Many Muslims will go to hell. This man will be a Muslim. He'll be in Last hell. person he'll to get alive. out of Jahannam. He would be thrown into Jahannam and he will leave Jahannam last. There is no other mu'min after this man. After this man, remember, Nabi Sallallahu Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would allow the messengers and the Prophet to give intercession to the people. And then the Hufar, and the Mujahideen, I'm sorry. And then the Mu'mineen themselves would intercede for other Mu'mineen, friends, family members. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala after all that, after the Malaika and the Rusul and the Mu'mineen and the Mujahideen and the Salihin and the, everybody, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also intercede for people and will take some people out of Jahannam. But this man did not qualify for any of those grants. Meaning everyone in hellfire will have no faith in them at all. Well now they will, it's too late now. People of faith on earth. This man will eventually be pulled out of hellfire. Just pulled out. Subhanallah. A man who will not walk out of Jannah out of Jahannam, he will crawl out of Jahannam. He will crawl, crawl, uh, crawl out of Jahannam. He will look back, and he will look at Jahannam, and he will say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, who saved me from you, to Jahannam. Wallahi, Allah has blessed me with the ni'mah, that he did not bless it with, on, with anybody, on anyone. What does it mean? He thinks that just coming out of Jahannam, is the highest achievement that he can achieve. It is the highest. So Allah will say to him, what? And he'll say, I, why, why were you screaming? And he will say, oh Allah, I screamed in hopes that you would stop the punishment, that you would save me from this. I was suffering and I prayed you would save me. And so Allah said, okay, grant it. You've been saved. And Alhamdulillah, he will stand and he will look at the fire and he will say, all praise to you Allah. You've saved me from that. After a short while, the fire, the heat, will continuously burn his face. And he will cry to Allah, and Allah will respond to him. And he will say, Oh Allah, this fire, you've saved me from it. Turn me around at least. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, we turn? We're free to turn. This is a gift. The ability to move your finger, to lift up a drink of water, these joints to bring it to drink. The Prophet said you have 360 joints in your body and every day you owe one good deed for each one. And the companion said, Oh Messenger of Allah, we can't do that. How can we do 360 good deeds every day? He said, Just pray two rakah salatul duha. Just two rakah nafil in the morning. And this will repay that debt every day. Many people don't pray that. On the day of judgment, when he comes out, brothers and sisters, he is safe from hell. He's out. No more dunya. No more world. No more test real, true worship. He cries to Allah. Why? 
because on his own will, he can't even turn around. He can't even look away from the fire. That's real submission. Meaning you, you don't have a choice. You've submitted. You're forced into submission. And he cries, said, Oh Allah, if you would just turn me around. And Allah accepts his prayer and says, Will you ask for more? He says, No, Allah, I swear. Just don't make me look at this fire. So he turns around his back to the fire. But in the distance, after a while, he notices a tree. And the heat now is burning his back. The heat of fire. It's burning his back. Um, in Surah Al-Mursalat, Allah describes this flame as... Um, that from the fire will be three stacks of smokes and the smoke even though there's smoke it will not stop the heat of the blaze from burning you so he's feeling it on his back and he says to Allah crying oh Allah there's a tree there and this tree is a tree of Jannah outside Jannah and he says oh Allah let me just take shade from this tree and maybe I can eat some fruit from it and maybe I can drink the drink from it. Let me go there, please, oh Allah. This heat is burning me. You said you wouldn't ask again. Oh Allah, please. I won't ask again. And so he is allowed to go to the tree. He sits, he drinks, he eats, he relaxes now away from the fire. And he will say, all oh, praise to Allah who has saved me from that. From there, he notices further down a bigger tree. Better food. Better drink. He says, oh Allah. <laughs> please. You wretched soul, you said you would not ask again. I know, Allah, I can't help it. <laughs> this is us in the world, isn't it? We always make promises and we break them. He promised. And on the day of judgment, after the day of judgment, he's still breaking his promises. And this is how Allah has made us. And he will say, please, that second tree. It's bigger, it's nicer. Let me go there. Will you ask again? Never, I promise. <laughs> He is allowed. And he says, Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah, you saved me from that, the fire. Then he sees another tree. Bigger. Grand. And he cries. He doesn't just ask, this time he's crying. It's like, how can I ask again? But he can't help it, the desire of wanting to go to that tree, the desire is too much. So he's crying, Ya Allah, I don't know what to do, I want to go there. <laughs> you wretched soul, you said you promised. I know, I can't, what can I do? Okay, go. But not again. Nothing. He said nothing. He gets there and all of a sudden he realizes these trees got closer and closer to the gate of Jannah. This is a tree. The biggest tree you can imagine. He's gone three sizes up. And he's got food and drinks. He's got everything you can imagine. He is far from the fire. And he notices something, brothers and sisters. On that day, try to put your mindset in his mindset. How you would feel after just being punished and tortured in hell. How you would feel, how tired you would be, how comfortable the rest by the tree is. But even in that state, he sees, all of a sudden he sees from that tree, the gate of Jannah. And it is so magnificent. It is so magnificent, this gate of Jannah, that it, instead of being at the tree of food and drink, he says, oh Allah, let me go to that gate. It's so beautiful that he, he feels the emotions rushing. Allah says, you wretched soul, you said you wouldn't ask. Oh Allah, but I didn't know it was there. <laughs> I didn't know it was there. Allah, please let me go to this gate. Please, Ya Rabbi. And he's crying for it. He's begging for it, seeing its beauty, its magnificence. It's better than eating and drinking and resting. Just being there to see this gate. What an amazing gate. Will you ask again? Never. Just let me go stand by and perhaps I can hear the people inside. And he goes to the gate and he's enjoying and he's there for years and he's just in awe of this gate. Oh my God, it's so amazing. And he hears the laughter and then all of a sudden he starts to cry again. Oh Allah. How wretched I am. Am I to be ruined and left outside while everyone else is inside? Allah said, you'll never stop asking. He said, I promise I'll stop asking. He said, you'll never stop asking. Just let me in. Just let me go inside. I'll never ask again. He would look to him that they would see that everybody has their places. He has no place. He's just standing and looking around. He's the only one who's homeless in Jannah. You know, imagine someone being homeless in Jannah. He's looking around and he said, Ya Rabbi, 
Everybody has house here, Allah. I don't have any. I don't have any. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya Abdi, ma yurdika anni. Ya Abdi, what will please you? What do you want? He said, place in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tamanna ya Abdi. Wish. And he said, Ya Allah, I want this. And I want that. I want that. Subhanallah just came out of Jahannam and now he has his laundry list. You know, I have this, this, this. You know. So what about the earth you were on? All the gems, all the wealth of the dunya that you were upon. The world you had. What if I gave you the whole world and everything in it? Would you be happy? He's just blown away. He's like, all I wanted to do was go inside. The whole world and everything in it? Oh Allah, you are the most gracious. If you gave it to me, you know? So he says, no, you'd still ask. What if I gave you two of those worlds? With two, two times that much everything in it. Would you be satisfied? Oh Allah, I haven't even gone inside yet. That would more than blow me away. I'd be happy with it. No, you would ask. What if I gave you three and he carried on to five planets like earth and all that is in it. If I give all that to you, would you be content? Five times? And he's like in tears saying, Allah, I would be content. No, you would still ask for more. So I will give you ten equivalent to the earth. قَالَ أَتَسْتَهَزِّئُ بِي Are you making fun of me, Ya Allah? وَأَنْتَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِ وَأَنْتَ الْمَلِكِ How could you make fun of me, Ya Allah? He said, no, ten times of this dunya. So the minimum wage of Ahl Jannah, the least place you can get to Ahl Jannah, is ten times of this universe. Inside the lowest Jannah, come in. And that's the last person to enter paradise. May Allah make us better than that.